Well, <laughs> then you can roll it out anytime you want. I'm gonna do it. Just... Welcome back to All Things Acura. This is Matt. And this is Justin. Great. And uh, I, again, just to kind of reintroduce ourselves a little bit, uh, I'm Matt. I've been in the auto industry for about eight years. And I'm Justin, and I've just been in this Rolling industry along, yeah. too long. You're collecting uh, dust. Right? <laughs> right? You know, <laughs> I. It, it's funny you mentioned that again because oh. I imagine a lot of our listeners, watchers, viewers, uh, whoever you are, um, <laughs> probably don't listen to all the episodes, so they don't know. Uh, I've been in this industry since mm, Hector time. was a pup. Yeah, long time since I was fourteen. Yeah, I can tell you how old I am now. I'll let you just guess, but eighteen year, years here with the your brand, all facets uh, within the dealership. So. You know, that just happens. <laughs> it just happens just like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes. Bye, right. right, Greg. Greg. And you just... Do you want to go ahead? So sometimes... Sometimes uh, what happens is... You can leave pieces, parts of it, maybe. <laughs> yeah. um, sometimes what happens when you're trying to do a podcast uh, in the middle of a dealership and you might be the only two people in the room is... <laughs> this is the benefit and not benefit of being in the business. That's right. Trying to get information out. Yeah. Life goes on, right? It if does. If this was our only job, we could sound like other people crazy out there. And, <laughs> That's right. And uh, yeah. not have any interruptions in the perfect world, right? That's right. Um, but yeah, so anyway, and I'm, again, I'm Matt, just, a, uh, I've been doing this for about eight years now and uh, Justin and I work together only really. So um, anyway, so, um, but that's enough about all of us, and I'm kind of looking forward to like a theme song at the beginning of this. So I'm wondering when we're gonna get that started. Well, um, we tried to get some music in there, but if you want to uh, create that jingle, I'm not. I know my jingle. singing would definitely scare them away. <laughs> we would lose viewers fast. It, no, I'm not gonna do it. All right. Anyway, so all right, <laughs> Yo, did right, you yeah, come with one? I'm working on yet? No, oh. I'm just joking. I haven't. Um, okay. So yeah, so anyway, uh, again, thank you everyone who has been watching some of the viewer comments and questions that you guys have. Again, it, it does help provide a little bit of some of the content that we'd like to get out to you guys. Um, you know, we have some great questions and uh, comments, like I said, so we always appreciate that um, coming from everyone. Yeah, it's, it's good to know, again, and I know we've said this so time and time again, but just what you guys are interested in, what you want to hear, because... Um, that's kind of how we tailor the whole thing. We really want to get the information that you want. And so we're going to tailor our future episodes based on the, what your feedback and what you want to hear. Yeah. And I know it's not always easy. I know when I watch a YouTube video or listen to a podcast. Matter of fact, I, I never even commented <laughs> on a podcast before. Oh, that's that true. Even a thing? Oh, um, I think you can. Yeah, you can. Um, but obviously on YouTube, it makes it's not too hard to comment. But I know that I don't always jump in there and say stuff. And it's just... Again, we just want to make sure that we're spending our time efficiently to efficiently, efficiently to or something. <laughs> yeah, to get the information out to you. So we have some uh, some interesting topics uh, that that to talk about today. Um, they told us a little thing about the MDX uh, <laughs> Type S uh, demo units. We'll share that with you here in just a little bit. Yep. Um, also, some uh, interesting happenings with the TLX pricing that just happened the day yesterday. Oh yeah, yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday. Today's today um, important stuff. You want to know if you're interested in a TLX or thinking about one or have one on order. Mm. Mm. Pay attention to that. Uh, new programs came out yesterday, uh, as we mentioned in the last one. If you had watched or listened or however you tried to consume this craziness, um, that the program cycle was coming to an end. Ran through uh, January, February. Now we're in a new program cycle. These programs run uh, what through Mar through the Mar May, through March, April. Oh, yeah, is it through May? okay. May and April. Gotcha. Usually two months is what they run their program. So we'll talk a little bit about the programs. But everything is subject to change, which is yeah. always scary. So they always can change now. stuff. But pretty when you're in one of those program cycles, they pretty much try to leave them the same mm -hmm. because. Uh, and then we're going to touch a little bit on the used car market. And maybe what's happening out there. It's crazy out there in the used cars. Yeah. A lot of it's like a jungle. Right, exactly. It's a lot of instability out there. I don't know what anything specific, but there's some instability. It, in the used <laughs> car market or just in In the world in general. In the world. Yeah, in the world. In the world, there's some instability. That's right. And I, and I imagine everybody watches the news, so they probably know what <laughs> That's, to. Yeah, exactly. 
Um, yeah, you want to jump right into the comments here? So yeah. All right. So one of the first things is uh, a Skilo. Again, appreciate you uh, watching and uh, commenting. He, he commented, and again, not all these are like positive con comments. Sometimes we just like to read things that we thought were kind of important to talk about. So he said, uh, this should have come out a year earlier. And this is also in reference to the MDX Type S. Now with gas prices not going down anytime soon. Oh, I he wasn't talking about our podcast. No, that's our, our, our podcast going down soon. No, coming out a year <laughs> earlier. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's true. Probably should have did it. Either. Probably. That's okay. Ne better late than never. Yeah. What are you supposed to do? Uh, but with gas prices not going down anytime soon, he says, I want to convert to a PHEV SUV, which is actually a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle SUV. Um, it's just interesting how everybody, PHEV, how, uh, how quickly the consumers adapt to these, you know, the the automotive stuff. acronyms. Oh, I know. Yeah, that, sometimes you know, we have to look at I, I, I work hard not to use acronyms, mm -hmm. you know, when I'm talking to a customer, as mm -hmm. I kind of tell you guys not to as well. Yeah. The auto industry lingo and consumers like soak it up, like walk around. Are you kidding? How do how do you guys even know what a walk around was supposed to be? But now I now I've seen people actually respond back and say, "Can you give us a walk around on the car?" That was an industry term for fifty years. You <laughs> this know, is the a whole lingo. other podcast, by the way. Um, this is something that I've been. You, well, if you're not watching, uh, I wrote lingo on a piece of paper because that is something when I started in this business that I I never really liked because. I just felt a lot of the lingo, and this is true of a lot of jobs. I think sure. Every oh, I job, think every industry has its Yeah, own. and it's funny when you talk to your spouse or significant other, and you're, they tell you about their job or throughout the day. They're like, well, yeah, I did this uh, A, B, C, D with, uh, with the E, G, E, F or whatever. And you're like, I don't have no idea what you're talking about. And it's just kind of, and especially in the auto industry, we talk with people. So we have to be more clear about what we're talking about. And there's salespeople across the country that just use that lingo. I can give you, there's, I, I mean, I, I try anyway. to stay on a level that I don't talk about that. Even as long as I've been in this industry, I actually, I like have a pushback because new people get in, you know, like even yourself, you're yeah. like, now you were a good one to, to try to avoid it, but right. a lot of them, <laughs> right. you don't want to gravitate towards it. So they, oh, so they learn that lingo and then they yeah. want to use it with their customer. And, and oh man, that's, that's horrible. They, they don't know what you're talking about. Negative equity was always an industry term. I think the auto industry made that up. I don't even think that was, that's, I don't, it's probably not even real grammar or English. Right. But they made that up, yeah. you know, to talk about, you know, when you owe more on your vehicle than it's worth. Well, everybody knows that now. I, right. I promise you 10 years ago, nobody knew what that meant right. other than the people in the industry. It, yeah. There's so many terms and we could, we could literally have oh, one, yeah. episode one episode about lingo because we don't like it. And I know a lot of people don't. So but going back to the whole, he wants to convert to you know an electric car, which obviously the industry is moving that way. Um, and I know we talked to, we highlighted the gas prices thing just because you know obviously gas prices with where they're at right now. Uh, you know, Justin, you had said in the USA Today, California was at five plus dollars a gallon. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I so, don't, is that true? <laughs> Hopefully, is there anybody listening from California? I'm sure. I mean, are, are prices at the pump? Oh, past five bucks already. Where are we I at? guess we're, I probably Google that. We're like over three here. Um, is it over three now? Yeah, it was three. For, uh, three for thirty-nine uh, for a regular okay. premium was three sixty-nine when I filled up uh, just the night before yeah. last. So, yeah. so yeah, it, it is interesting. Obviously, we you know accurate at the moment. We well, we can, there's supposedly electric car in the future. We're not there yet, but uh, you know we had we did have hybrids, not plug-in hybrids, but we had the hybrid MDX for a while and. You know, it just wasn't one, something that people caught on to yet. Yeah, I think the, so luxury world and, and hybrid, you know, I don't, I don't know if that was a, you know, when Acura was trying to come out with a couple of different hybrid models, I don't know if that was a time when people just didn't associate, you know, any performance and any, you know, want to own with a hybrid. I right. think it still has a little stigma of, you know, that's kind of a, uh, performance wise, it's, right. it's not, a, there's no stigma, there's nothing that, marries the two when you talk right. about hybrid and hybrid, performance yeah even right. though i could did try to call it a sport hybrid it right just never really it just didn't know. take off and i you know maybe they were ahead of the the curve in the market i almost feel like now if they said no we had i think it. so right yeah and, but i yeah. It, you know we can't go back and, and recreate that what they yeah. are doing now and what the industry is pushing whether you like it or not and it, again that's another term ice mm -hmm. i'm sure you've heard of ice you know, and all they're saying is, you know, if you have a car that runs on gasoline, they call it ice now. Now it's electric and ice, right? I'm right. going to get my electric vehicle or I'm going to continue driving my ice vehicle. Right. I mean, now it's thrown around like like it's been out there for 20 years. 
Yeah, who yeah, who, who thought? knew? Who knew? But, but and, and that kind of also like you know we talked about briefly this real quick like the fact that like why you know everyone wants the MDX Type S to have like a huge bigger motor. At the same time, it's like okay, well, we can't keep producing all these bigger motor engines that are just you know yeah. consuming gas. So to go back to the gas point, and yeah. I know I was rambling there. On no, you're, all you're, kinds no, of we different will. things <laughs> that happens. <laughs> um, but you know, this happened. Uh, you know, w in the market for those of you that remember back in you know 2009, 2010, gas prices just shot through the roof, and I think we bumped uh, four, a little over four dollars a gallon for a while there. Mm. And I know you weren't in this industry at the time, Matt, but yeah. I, I know when we were here, we had large SUVs and trucks lined up on a weekend. And I mean, literally lined up trying to get out of these vehicles. And I'm not saying that good, bad, otherwise, if you want to drive that Tahoe or Suburban or a large truck because you like driving it, or need the it. gas yeah. prices are going to be a factor. And when... So when you look at Acura as a brand and Honda as a brand and you start saying, well, but the, but the vehicle should have more power. It should have more of this. <laughs> you know, there's such a long-term conservative company, which in times when things, gas gets mm. five plus dollars a gallon, their conservativeness, uh, conservative enough? Yeah. They're, yeah, they're, they're, they're all of a sudden <laughs> starts to make them look like heroes. Well, they're not trying to be heroes. They just know that things have uh, ebbs and flows to them. Yeah. And, and they, you know, they want to give it enough power. They want to give it enough performance without making it overboard. And if every MDX had 350, 400 horsepower, well, there'd be a whole lot of people that right. wouldn't be very happy with the fuel economy. Oh, right. right. Exactly. Yeah. It's in the, it, it's always like a steady line with Honda and Acura. They don't, like you said, with the ebbs and flows, they don't try to be like, okay, well, now we have to do this because everyone else is doing it and vice versa. It's just they want to stay the pace. They, they know the people that own Acuras and Hondas keep them for a long time. I mean, so they want to make sure that... They have something that can market to those people for the next, you know, five plus ten, you know, ten years. So as a as an insider note, I and I kind of was, was just talking about that with the gas prices, and uh, as those prices, you know, if you drive a larger SUV and you drive it because you just like driving it, and I'm not judging. I mean, there's plenty of large SUVs right now, and mm -hmm. I know even Acura at one time said, "Should we have one larger? Should we make a bigger one?" Right. And just keep in mind that those, when when fuel gets high, that market takes a dump. Big and time. Big time. Yeah. And it's and it's really a painful dump because, and we'll talk a little about used car pricing here and pricing where's the market's at, because they're expensive vehicles too. Trucks. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Matt, you oh know, yeah. We, we have a crazy. Chevy store here, so we know what the price of trucks are. But trucks are crazy, and those larger SUVs, when you start talking about Tahoe's, uh, Denali's, Escalade's, Suburban's, <laughs> yeah. they are crazy expensive, especially compared to even, you yeah, know. Yeah, they're our, pushing $100,000. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's so crazy. So. To have, and then when the value of those changes pretty dramatically, mm -hmm. oh, that's a big drop right, off, right? Right, right. Oh, absolutely. Especially right now when you're also paying <laughs> close to stick or sticker right or over or more or right. more or yeah more. sorry yeah one of the comments that i didn't write it down but uh they said that the their mdx or their acura dealer was i'm assuming they were talking about the mdx type s but in pa supposedly they're charging 15k over sticker hey you know it's uh that's pretty hefty so yeah i would you know if you really i mean I would shop that around but yeah, you right. can that's right. you know there are places I and mean, i know we've talked about it in the past shows mm -hmm. but we're not charging over msrp for our vehicles um and every dealer has their rights but there are dealer there are other ones of us out there so you know do your due diligence um don't share this with the local Acura dealer don't, <laughs> don't take in our video yeah, and come say, on well, these guys aren't doing it why can't you be like them that's not what i'm saying just make sure you do yeah, your due diligence. that's not our business that's their business it's so ultimately up there. Um, and then we'll go, we'll ahead and move on to the next. Yeah, because sorry. We'll keep talking. Let's move on. What? Um, but this was a really good one, and this one this might lead down some rabbit holes here. But uh, a gentleman was basically trying to buy out his lease. Um, it's uh, John, uh, and it looks like uh, his lease, his final lease payment was up March 11. Uh, trying to talk to Acura Finance regarding what he needs to do. He's working with his local dealer, and it says that they want to charge him um, money for for what I can do myself. So basically what he's trying to do is buy his own car and it sounds like they're charging him money. And we know that how that works, right? And we can talk about the different ways to buy your own car, but Justin, you want to go ahead and lay it off on that? Yeah, so John, I I understand. And uh, we'll full transparency here because we're, we're doing this for you guys. You know, if someone comes to us and wants to buy out their lease, we do charge them a fee as well. And 
because we have to pay people to do those steps involved. Right. We have we have office staff. We, I mean, title clerks. We have the you know, finance manager finance himself. people. There's mail. There's sales. I mean, there's people involved in those steps. So we mm -hmm. do have to charge a fee. It can't be done just pro bono. Um, because we make not. I mean, we make nothing. Right. right if we don't, we're, we're so. literally shuffling paperwork. There's no uh, benefit to us as far as service, car sales, or anything involved in that, right. other than shuffling that paper and making sure everything's correct. So we do charge a fee. Now we don't charge a, an exorbitant fee, but we also say that if you don't want to pay the fee, you can do it directly with Acura themselves, and you can. Yeah. Um, the benefit, if there, I guess we like to hope if there's benefit with us is we handle everything, right? Yep. You, you come in, you sign your paperwork, you leave with your own car with a temporary tag, uh, because you're going to need one because those plates yep. are not in your name and, yep. and we, we provide all that stuff. If you do it on your own, you have to go through, do all that. And it can be taxing. I had a, another gentleman, a good customer of ours that <clears throat> didn't want to give us, and we charged $300. Plus like whatever fees. I mean, it's not, <laughs> yeah. I, I'll just throw that out there. It's not like a lot. But, you know, he waited several months to get his title from Acura. He, he yelled at us nonstop oh, during that yeah. time because he thought we were the ones, you know, facilitating that. No, he chose to do it through them. <laughs> right, right. And that's okay. You totally know, okay. I, and I, I don't know that that's how other dealers do it as far as what they charge or, or the fees. So I, I can't speak to them. Um, but you can do it yourself. Absolutely. Um, we do it as a courtesy because a lot of people just don't want to go through all that. And keep in mind, if you're if you're buying it through Acura, well, there's three different ways really to buy it. If you buy through Acura, you have to write them a check. You can't finance it. Right. So that yeah. is, you know, one obviously yeah. one of the huge benefits. You can go to you can go to an outside party to finance it if you would like. We have had, and I've heard this from numerous people that. Some banks are telling you to go to the dealer because there's quite a bit of processing work they have to do on their end. And I think they're making the assumption that it's easier for us to do it um, because I don't think they really they may not charge a fee at a bank. I'm not sure. And in terms of rates, I know uh, obviously we offer, you know, we offer competitive rates across the board. So the easiest route is probably just going through a dealership. You know, and if you want to finance it, and, and there's some other things too, we can offer things like warranties. Yeah, and that that's another benefit I think that we can provide is if you're interested in, I'm going to keep this car because I'm buying it out. Now maybe mm -hmm. just buying it out to resell it, whatever the case, that case might be. But maybe I'm keeping this car. I'm going to give it to my, you know, my daughter or my, my son, or I'm going to drive it for myself, and I want to add some extended uh, service contract as far as warranty coverage on the vehicle. We can do that at that time. It's a great time to do that. You can roll it into your, yeah. your loan that you get if you're, if you're getting a loan on the vehicle. So there are a lot of benefits where, you know, if you buy it yourself and you go through all that and you tackle all those things and then you still want to get those yeah. additional benefits, it becomes a lot harder. Right. We'll exactly. talk about, you know, I don't care whether you want an extended warranty or extended service contract on your car or not. That's up to you. But yeah. we'll talk about maybe some of the right ones to look at and the ones not to get. If they're calling your house or you see the commercial on TV, it's probably not the right one. I will just say that up front, <laughs> uh, as a little show note. Oh. We'll talk about that in other episodes. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, that's a whole we'll probably get some, <laughs> some experts involved. But, you know, anytime you can stick with the manufacturer's backed coverage, yeah. you're way ahead of the game. And we'll talk about why that is um, because these outside companies, uh, it's not that they don't have good coverage. It's not that they don't provide coverage, but there's a lot of... Yeah, there's loopholes too. well, there's a lot of loopholes, things like that. There's deductibles and things, you know. We yeah, there's yeah, we'll dive into yeah. that. But <laughs> all right, so, so yeah, thank you, thanks again for the comments and questions. Um, hopefully, we will get some more as we release this, and uh, I know hopefully we'll make some more videos. If you hadn't had a chance to, also check out the MDX Type S video that I made. Yeah, um, it was just a Good quick stuff. review. Um, the one, you know, just it's just something that that way you get a little taste of what that car's yeah. all about. So that uh, Matt just did the video on. Um, <laughs> the driving experience right? right that was the driving experience one so uh that was a uh a great video um and, and there's lots of we have lots of comments from that and i think we talked a little bit about that on, on the yeah. last one and we have a visitor and we have a visitor <laughs> <laughs> they might actually he, yeah they, we, we have visitors here so we'll again we'll, when you do this when you're tr when you're working it, it happens it is what it is so it we're happens. not doing this after hours right. so sorry right. <laughs> To happen. Come on in. Oh, I didn't open the door. Uh, I don't know who it was, but it was sold. Okay, okay that's. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That could have brought us at any time.
It get a press it. <laughs> Anytime we're to set it somewhere, yeah. We'll we'll get an on air light soon. Yeah, that's yeah. it's on the budget yet though. <laughs> right. Problem. Not in the budget. But we, <laughs> there is no budget. That's probably why it's not there. That's right. Uh, the on air light it went out with the budget. That's right. <laughs> got salt. We don't have enough. <laughs> right. <so. laughs> so anyway, um, um so yep. Uh, interesting. MDX type S Acura came out. This is really uncharacteristic, but this is if you're in the market for one of these. Acura came out, uh, I think that was last week, mm -hmm. and just kind of abruptly said to the dealers uh, that they do not have to hold their demo unit now. In other words, it can be for sale. And so what I'm, I'll rewind a little bit. <laughs> At the beginning when they're releasing the MDX Type S, and they do this with a lot of models, they give you one unit as a demo, what they call demo unit, where you have to keep it for, it's typically uh, 90 days yeah. or so. Um, so, so that you have a car there that people can experience, come and drive and see what it's all about because typically they're popular, they sell out and what happens is everybody gets rid of them and then nobody can see it. Right. Yep. So they try to do that on purpose. Well, for some reason, and I'll just say for some reason, because I really, I, I, I don't, don't want to speculate. Well, we could speculate. But I don't, I have no <laughs> idea. It didn't come with any additional information other than you can now, uh, we are releasing those cars. You can now sell them and could have been some parking from Acura dealers. <laughs> yeah, usually if they get enough pushback, like, yeah. uh, and, and usually when the inventory is tight and you have a car sitting here that people want to buy, uh, they, you know, they're yelling back at the manufacturer saying, well, I have this perfectly good car here I could be selling and, and right. you're not letting me sell it. Yep. And I'm sure after so much of that, they finally said, you know what, just sell the thing. Right. You, you do yeah. what you want to do. You guys have it here and yeah, yeah I get it. So, uh, so those are available. <laughs> uh, we uh, have made the decision to try to keep ours for a little longer. Sorry. Yeah. It's just not fair to not have one here for the people that have not got a chance to see that. I mean, there's probably still a lot of people that don't even realize that that car is at the dealership. Right. Um, so it's not fair. We ran into that with the TLX. And yep. I know you talked about it. We wish we had it a little longer for the time that we had it. Obviously, you know, we we sold Well, I think we was like we said like 60 or however many days we said we had it. So we still had it for a little while. But this was pretty abrupt. I mean, we, I think we've had this car for less than 30 days. The one yeah, we have oh, here. Oh, gosh, yeah. yeah. I mean, three weeks maybe. So, I mean, which is weird. also that car's up at the Cleveland Auto Show. <laughs> so, yeah, that's our that's the one. So <laughs> it's the one. It's not not here to sell. Anyway. That's right. It's not here to sell anyway. But uh, but yeah. So like Justin said, we're going to hang on to it because we want to make sure you know the people who are interested in have an opportunity to see it. You know, however much time. That's up to you how much time goes by before we can actually sell it. But uh, anyway, it's up to the demand. Yeah, um, I guess we'll look at look at that. And I, I wonder if they did that because uh, hopefully my if I'm going to look at it from a positive aspect, I'm going to say hopefully they've done it because that means there's going to be they, they they've opened up the kind of the flood banks. There's no flood banks, but uh, <laughs> turn the spigot a little bit more. There's going to be more of them coming yeah. out and they feel that there's going to be some availability of that product. That's true. Yeah, Cause I think we have a couple. Yeah, we have a couple coming in ourselves. So, you know, it's one of those one of those things that uh, it's a good it's probably a good sign ultimately. So, uh, so MDX Type S, uh, the hold is lifted on that. Uh, news this week, 2022 IIHS I -I ratings are in. Yeah, and it's nice to see. Uh, it, it's obviously a lot of cars are safe nowadays, but, you know, obviously not every car makes this list. So it's nice to see. Yeah, so yeah. for those of you that don't know what that acronym means, as we go back to it, it is... <laughs> Uh, it is the uh, Institute for Insurance Highway, Highway Safety. Safety. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> and uh, so I, how this became more relevant than that, the other acronym, what's a NAST? NIST, NIST, oh, uh, NH, NHTSA. Yeah. 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 Um, and that's a government. This is Insurance Institute. Uh, mm -hmm. But this has become more popular. I think that was because of Dateline years ago. Oh, I yeah. think Dateline used yeah. to show those reports. And so people all they gravitate towards because they get they got to see them crash in the cars and they say that one's good that one's bad don't buy that right and so I think it, it got yeah. a lot of awareness and so now they're they're very it's a highly I don't know what you say highly, yeah, well, highly respected it's reputable, or reputable it's res yeah respected um, respected you know industry so uh, the headlines came out the Honda and Acura gunning to be America's safest automaker that was by the car buzz. Um, and it, it's good to see that a ton of Honda and Acura's on there. I, I, from the Acura perspective, uh, all our models, and we did have to say <laughs> all of them other than the ILX. And I don't know if that's because 
Um, it's they didn't test it. No, it was one older model. Actually. It doesn't say obviously a lot of information yeah. that's not on there, but yeah, it could be because it's an outgoing model. You know, as we now know, um, that could be. But uh, and this is for IH. It's for the plus rating too. But uh, yeah, so they all mm-hmm. won, won the award for the top safety pick plus. And uh, so what's that, that's their highest rating, I guess, is is the moral of the story of right. that. Um, and Matt and I actually had to look. Here we are talking about it in the industry, and we actually had to take a peek just to. We knew that the plus was a good thing, right? You get the good <laughs> rating, plus good. you get a plus, <laughs> and we weren't sure why. And we were like, "Well, gosh, we thought we knew why." Uh, why it yeah, was. I thought. Or, well, originally, I thought it had to do with the fact that some the active safety systems, you I, know, you know, because obviously you have like spot. the structure yeah. of the car, which obviously you, you hope is safe, and then the next step would have been. Okay, we have active safety systems, right? Well, that's not what it means. It means <laughs> well. So I think the, you still have to to get the top safety pick. Yeah. In that category, you still have to have the active safety ratings and Correct. different things. Um, to get the plus, then you have to you have to uh, go above and beyond that. And I think the last or the latest thing that they've added to it, they keep adding more to make it harder and harder to get that award. Mm-hmm. Um, is were the headlights, right? The headlights, yeah. Which in the United States, they're terrible. Um, there's plenty of articles out there talking about how bad they are. But I will say, Acuras are phenomenal. Um, that's not just coming from <laughs> me because I've driven a lot of different cars. But Acuras at night have to be some of the brightest, which some people are you know, like. I use my corny term whenever when I talk <laughs> about the headlights on Acuras. I say, you know, they are, they are, it's night and day difference. I, yeah, that's that sounds right. corny. It is. But I'm telling you, <laughs> when I get, my wife used to have a, a pilot, right, okay, yeah. years ago uh, before it got totaled. Now, that hasn't been that long ago. But the regular halogen headlights, which, I mean, the, the regular cars out there that have those, I mean, there's a gazillion of them, right? right? I mean, oh, yeah. And you get in one of our cars with the jewel-eyed LED headlights, yep. or even if you go back, you know, to the previous generation and look, and compare the Xeon headlights yep. that they had, there there's no comparison. I literally get in a Pilot, and I and I feel like I have I feel like I have to keep <laughs> turning the switch because their lights aren't on. Right, right. I mean, that's how different it yeah. is. Yeah, it really is. And like I I have a Honda Odyssey, and it has the and here's what's interesting, right? So. Um, these cars with LED headlights, my Odyssey has LED headlights. It's not the same. And a big difference is the fact that these LED lights are reflecting off uh, some sort of metal reflector inside inside of the uh, the headlight unit. Whereas Acura's LED headlights, it's like individual dual eye headlights. LEDs, yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. So it's a big difference. Yeah, so that's, a, that's an exciting award. The MDX, RDX, TLX all fall in that category. The one point I think we will, we will make drive home with when, when, when they win awards like this yeah. is this is what they're about. This is what Acura and Honda are about. They are an engineering company first and a car enthusiast automaker second. Yeah. And I know that sounds yeah, kind of I mean, weird, they, but but they really start from the engineering perspective. They, yeah. they, they're concerned about reliability and how you the car performs and the quality of yeah. you know how of the protects yeah, you exactly yeah before they care how the rest of everything else happens yeah and and if you ask anyone what's the safest cars in the market people will tell you like Subaru or, or maybe Volvo which th- those cars do rate well but Honda and Acura they're right up there they're just as safe if not safer in a lot of cases yeah and then we were going down through the list I th- I forget how many models um, you had saw that it was only forty nine models got yeah. that badge yeah so I don't know how many. Hundreds, maybe thousands of models are oh, out yeah. there of cars. Yeah. Only 49 have gotten that badge. So that says a lot. And obviously, there's a lot of Subarus on that list, Volvos on that list. Toyota. You know, Toyota's got uh, quite a few cars on that list. We were surprised to see, you know, some of these really hot, hot, pop like, and brands. Yeah, the Kia. Well, yeah, the Kias. Um, Kia only there's only had two. two cars on that list. And they're both the cars. Yeah. None of them are the SUVs. I was a little surprised right. by that. It, even when you consider like high end luxury, um, you would say that well, gosh, Mercedes is a really, you know, a brand that that is, yeah, um, you know, very, extremely safe. There's only two Mercedes cars on that list, right? Uh, and I know we're going to hear about it from all the people that like Mercedes. I'm not saying I don't like those cars, but I'm just saying that the, that it's really that tells you how hard those awards will win when cars like that. Uh, BMW is, didn't have a car on the list, which oh, I tells didn't even you. I didn't even pay attention to that. That's yeah. interesting. So. Uh, really neat stuff. Uh, again, just talks to the safety of the cars, and I don't know that everybody realizes the safety. Yeah, because uh, Acura doesn't really like tout it. They don't do a great no, job of you know, marketing that. 
<laughs> well, he did for well, like. We could, yeah. That's a whole other subject itself yeah. is, oh. is how well accurate does it not touting what they're really good at. And uh, that's one thing that they could have they rode that safety ladder a long ways because if there's been a lot of brand identity with yeah. Acura over the years, oh, yeah. people would say luxury, not luxury, performance, what are they? Yeah. Well, safety is one thing they've always had, yeah. right? It is. And it, 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 if it wasn't safe, they wanted to redo it or remake it, whatever. Yeah. Safety is one area that they're, they're out there. Um, maybe they should have followed, you know, Volvo. Yeah, that's right. Sorry about the uh, crash there, everyone. We kind of crashed. Was that was that rated? It, was that a safety pick? It was us? rated poor, I will tell you that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know you guys don't see any interruptions on the uh, on the thing, but obviously it's darker out probably now if you're watching <laughs> right. the YouTube video. Right, we lost some light <laughs> during our... It's our, 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 Yeah, we, we it's part of our thing. We know that's going to happen. But uh, anyway, so we apologize if we pick up somewhere where we maybe forgot we were left up. But I know we were talking about the crash ratings. Yeah, we were just reviewing some of the vehicles that we were surprised that weren't on the list. You know, mm -hmm. some of the manufacturers and vehicles that you just expect to have super, yeah. you know, really good crash results. And uh, again, only 40, uh, 49 of those cars got the top safety pick plus. Right. Um, so super safe. Obviously, you guys probably already know that about the Acura brand. Maybe you don't, um, but it one of the best kept secrets out there in the industry is probably yeah. the, the safety of Acura as a whole. You know, obviously Honda builds great products. Right, too. right. So yeah, absolutely. So obviously, the only car we have not on not on the list is the ILX, but we don't know the main reason behind that. Could be something. Yeah, I don't know that they test every model every year. I think that's where that stems from. And uh, since the ILX oh, is not true. a new yeah. model, yeah. right, coming out, whereas you have the you know the newer TLX and the mm -hmm. new MVX and the you know everything's new um, and a redesigned RDX. Uh, that's that's what drives those, so, those things. So. So yeah, leaning into the uh, the TLX, we got some news on the TLX. Yeah, was March first. Great, it happened. <laughs> they did it again. Yeah, is there a song like that? They did it again. Um, oops, I did it again. Oops, I did it again. Yeah, classic. Um, so the TLX made it through <laughs> the last end of the year price increase from Acura without a price increase. It came through unscathed. It came through unscathed, but. Lo and behold, yeah. was not to be left behind. Uh, there was a price increase March 1st um, for the TLX. Uh, uh, yeah. you know. <laughs> so it was kind of probably bound to happen. Yeah. But there's, well, you, like you said, there's people that had had some on orders for a while. Right? Yeah. Don't shoot the messenger. We're, we are yep. just to get to give the information out. <sighs> um, good news, I don't, I don't know that they went crazy for a mid-year model uh, price increase. It might be a little bit more than normal, but they didn't go as much as they did on some of the other models. And I don't know if we talked about that in the past episode. It might have a little bit on the first oh. one. Um, how, you know, at towards the end of the year, we got the huge price increase and there, every manufacturer is kind of jumping in. Obviously, labor costs have gone up. Lots of costs have gone up. Less vehicles to sell. You Less, know, yeah, the chips with the instability. Yeah, there, it's just in the world. Yeah. So there's just a lot of cost. So we expect yeah. some price increases. Um, so TLX across the board went up $800. So MSRP, 800 bucks more for a TLX. So that's build date. Uh, so anything that's coming in, you know, right now is going to ha yeah. have that price increase attached to it. If you had one on order, it just went up $800. That's yeah. And we talked about the little bit discussion earlier, like what, uh, obviously we are still paying for that. It's not something that we can necessarily say, okay, well you get the discount, but you know, Talk to your dealer. Yeah, yeah. talk to your dealer. Um, <laughs> whatever you agreed upon, hopefully, you know, you can get as close as you can to maybe what you had as far as price-wise. Um, good news, on I think, on the Type S version, uh, it did get a price increase too, but it was only $500. Um, that's from interesting. From what I can see, yeah. um, which was interesting. And I think that's because that came out later. They kind of probably price that were according to what they thought it was going to be. That makes sense, yeah, for why. So, um, so there you have it. Um, TLX price increase uh, across the board on 2022 models, $800 on the regular terms, $500 on the Type S. Yep. And that's any vehicle that basically arrives uh, after March 1st. Lots of people said, I, I think I saw on one of the comments, and I apologize if you didn't do this before, it just came to me, is that uh, I said my MDX has been pending mm. in transit for a while. I saw that one. Yeah, and I, I apologize we didn't get to that earlier. 
Um, there are a lot of vehicles pending in transit and there is a, a backlog. They even sent this out. Uh, there's a little bit of a backlog with uh, logistics right now because of the weather that the storms caused in, in the Midwest. And uh, a lot of those cars come right here from the Midwest. So, <laughs> That's right, right so down that, the road. Right. So, <laughs> so they were, they, there's a backlog and there's a problem. They should be eliminating that, but they, we had a lot of cars sitting pending in transit. And I know I, I apologize. Uh, one gentleman had his MDX. He, went, he said it was pending for several I think five, three, weeks, three or four, or something like in the weeks, right? Yeah. Something that was kind of goofy, but. And obviously, depending on where you live across the country, there's going to take longer to get to you than, than most. And, and they do sit probably in transit yeah. longer than they do in some places. Um, but they, they apologize for that. I think they're working through a lot of that logistic stuff and hopefully they get caught back up. So, right. so that time frame's a little faster. Cause some of those statuses have been kind of goofy. Like I think we've had some cars that kind of show up and they've showed like pending and it's like, you know, yeah, they might, they've been pulling them on and off the list depending on what's availability as far as being able to ship cars. And so if it's pending though, it's, it's really, it's close, right? It, it's, it's bound to get loaded on a transport at any moment. And it could be within a, hopefully in a day or two, depending yeah. on how long it takes to get to you from there. Um, but, uh, so pending is a good stat- status. It just takes a minute to and, get to you. And then lastly, um, and we're going to apologize because we want, did want to touch on the used market. I know we mentioned at the beginning, we will, we will bring that up in another one because that could fill up in another in a whole another half an hour. Um, but we did want to mention the programs uh, that Acura did just because today is March 1st. Or I'm sorry, today is not March 1st. Today is what, March 2nd. But those programs, they came out, I think, yesterday, right? Yeah, so yeah. all the prior programs have been uh, expired and then they come out with a new set of programs. I'll try to touch on just a couple mm-hmm. of things that, that might have changed. Um, they continue everything they had on the ILX. It's similar across the board uh, to what they had before. You know, it probably helped to have what I had before. Everything looks... <laughs> oh, that's uh, true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. But I'll kind of go through them. Uh, so that's all the same. ILX programs still remain the same. Uh, carried over, I guess you would say. Um, the only thing I will point out, and I talked about this at the very end of the last, uh, last episode, are the residual values have dropped. So meaning that... Even if the lease rates and rebates have stayed the same, if that residual drop the percentage, yeah. you're going to lose that. It's going to be that much more. It's just yep. that's because the manufacturer has to supplement. I mean, in a typical year, you wouldn't that wouldn't matter that much typically. Yeah, they try to offset them a little bit with the rates, uh, but I, I, we're fighting two things now. We're fighting time, which lowers those, that end value, mm-hmm. and then we're fighting the increase in rates, which is happening out there in the world. Um, yeah. Uh, so. We're fighting two different things. Yeah. Um, so ILX, all things considered, say the same. TLX, uh, again, same across the board, 22 TLX. Everything looks the same. Still has a $1,000 loyalty. Uh, if you're an Acura owner with a 2012 or a newer Acura, you qualify for a $1,000 Acura loyalty offer, purchase or lease. Uh, and then they have the 750 Conquest offer, which Conquest would be most of the luxury brands, including uh, the sister brand of Honda. Yep. Um, and you and there's a whole list of vehicles that apply to that. You can look that up on Acura.com or contact your dealer. Do they sell programs on the 21 TLX? Well, uh, no. So they, 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 they did didn't. eliminate okay. everything <clears throat> on the 21 TLX uh, other than just a flat uh, inventory payout. So uh, that means all, there is no lease um, rates or anything left okay. on that vehicle. So the big money that was on that is gone. I assume there are really aren't any of those vehicles right. sitting out there. Um, to speak of, interesting enough, they left the program still on the 21 RDX, and we haven't had a 21 RDX since Hector was a pup. Longer I mean, than the TLX. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, so, I mean, it's that's been a, weird. a real... Yeah, who ha- who has a 21 RDX? Though? I don't know. I don't, and I don't see any out there in the zone. I don't. I think from our... And again, their zone cover is almost the entire Midwest from, you know, nor- northern Michigan, Wisconsin, Chicago, all the way down to, up, you know, Chicago down to Texas. Dealers. So it's a big zone, and there uh, there wasn't anything listed there. So there must be some reason they're keeping that 21 RDX and from stuff on there. There might still be some of those out there. There are some really nice programs on that car if you see one out there that's available. If you could find I don't know where they're hiding them. Maybe they found a, a lot full of them that they forgot to ship or that's something. Right. I, I have no idea where those cars are. <laughs> that's right. They're gone. <laughs> well, we got these. Uh, that's where they're going. It reminds me of those pictures of the Fords. You know, you see all the Fords yeah. and whatever. I use Ford because that's 
the one that you I picture yeah, and you hear about, about where they yeah. had thousands of cars parked in a stadium somewhere or, or it was a in a field, field like a giant field down in Kentucky. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, it's I feel like this twenty one RDX might be that way. Like the, all of a sudden they found these RDXs. <laughs> like, oh, what do we do with these? Right, They're hiding under all the snow. It's not really the case, but I just yeah. that's what I picture. <laughs> uh, so twenty two RDX still uh, as uh, somewhat of a least special money rate uh, factor on it and they came out with five hundred dollar lease loyalty offer um that's new so if you have a coming out of an accurate lease going back into another accurate lease they do have five hundred dollars that's new that's a positive that's going the right way to help save you some money uh, on accurate parts and i will say that i didn't see that coming because they there aren't any of these things i mean yeah. they are getting sold everywhere yeah. and again incentives are applied to help move vehicles that are available. Yep. Right. Absolutely. So uh, they are trying to put a little bit of a foot forward to help those people with, I think probably coming out of a lease, you know, close that payment gap. Well, also it maybe it's trying to offset a little bit of that, res- uh, that drop, you know, yeah, for people, residual. you know, yep. for people who are Laurel who are coming out of a lease, they want to, you know, yeah. recognize that. So helping those out. And the, the really good news out of all of this is they've really kind of maintained the MDX incentives, which is still rather incredible when you compare the rest of the incentives out there. So a, a really good money factor as far as lease rate on that vehicle. It's still that thousand dollar loyalty offer and, or the 750 conquest offer. I know it not, maybe not the best of all time, but all things considered with as popular as that car is and as popular it has been, they've done a good job keeping that program on that vehicle. And as limited as, as been. Right. I mean, we don't, I mean, we don't, we have like two, I think coming in in the next, Couple of, like a month or something that's not spoken for, but that's it. Everything so else I, is. I made urgency to the fact that last month they would lock in those programs uh, for you for ninety days. So if you did hop on that, you get to take advantage of those old, old, older rates and residuals, which is kind of a, a, a nifty little program. That was a neat deal. Yeah. Um, and I think we didn't probably play it up enough as we should have. Well, it was kind of late. You know, yeah, we kind of a little late in the yeah. game. But that's, yeah, the good news is. is they they're doing that program again. Um, for uh, for this program site. Yeah. So if your vehicle's not there that you want, you can lock in the rates at whatever program you want, and you, it gives you 90 days uh, to get a vehicle and take advantage of those programs. 90 days, three months from now in this time frame yeah. should cover most people. Uh, there's going to be those couple cars and not going on. <laughs> right. Whatever's happening out there in the world that might yeah. throw another curveball or wrench into the flow of things, it should take care of that uh, of you getting a vehicle at least under these programs and just having a little bit of buyer's confidence that you know I'm buying this vehicle and I know going in that that I, I at least the numbers should be similar to when that vehicle arrives. Can't promise any more price increases. I really, uh, you know, it is what it is, but yeah. but. Nobody likes them, and they come at times you don't want them to come. Yeah. I don't foresee any. I will say that I'm pretty confident. That yeah, we we just don't know. Obviously, that's why that's part of the, what why why we're doing this is that way. When we do hear stuff like that, an actor doesn't necessarily always tell us until the last minute, anyway. No. So it's kind of no, like they don't. you know they leave us in a dark and a lot of stuff. But um, yeah, e- either way, hopefully we can get that information out to you, everyone as quickly as possible whenever we hear it. And uh, really, I think on the on the last note, we I know we were just gonna kind of talk about the Integra next week. Yeah. So again, the tenth, which Matt <clears throat> told me was thir- next Thursday, Thursday yeah. um, March tenth. Uh, mm-hmm. And depending on when this comes out, again, this will probably be out tomorrow, so we'll be a day later, so a week approximately. Um, the Integra will go tool will go live to be able to order your Integra. Or pre-order, I say not order, but pre-order your Integra at Acura.com. That mm-hmm. tool will be up and live and running. And it, we'll have more information. I'm excited to kind of share that information yeah. and get it out there. And we're maybe maybe next, like you said, next Wednesday we might see a little glimpse of it. And so that way by the time you guys see it, like Thursday, we can we can get that yeah, stuff at hope, the same time. We hope to have <clears> it out, <throat> like, you know, timing-wise so we can at least share with you what we know um because typically they all have information on accurate.com and that might be all of it i don't know yeah. we typically might have a live couple extra details you know they might give us a little more information you know maybe a full color spectrum if they only share part of the colors and some different things like that yeah so we'll definitely uh share as much as we have uh, next week so that's exciting um, a lot of people have been waiting to hear about 
you know, that car, trim packages, colors, yep. all options, all kinds of stuff. It's a lot, a lot of good stuff. Obviously, with the spring coming up, people are getting excited about, you know, not the SUVs anymore. You know, we're starting to transition it back into the, hey, the TLX, because we have a lot of people on the TLX yep. right now. So all it's a sudden, good, yep. <clears throat> it's a good cars, sign. Just the wet, warm weather comes out, and all of a sudden, uh, it, yeah. So, mind shift. Um, and then, you know, we did talk about, we want to talk about the used car market because it is going crazy, going great, it has been crazy. And we kind of want to help just kind of navigate it, our thoughts on it, where, where it's going, yeah. um, what it looks like. Does it make sense to get uh, one of those vehicles right now? Uh, you know, how to navigate all that. Yeah. So, we'll put together another show for that. We, we felt that, you know, adding it to this, which is already long. <laughs> wow. We, every week we talk about making it shorter and we we, we almost might get longer. Next one to use one is, is all we'll talk so about. We'll, maybe, we'll, so we'll throw one out there. Uh, maybe we'll just do an extra episode on that um, used car market. Just things we see, different trends. I know a lot of people, you know, across the board say it's not a good time maybe to buy um, one of those cars. Sometimes you need to. Yeah. It, so, you yeah. know, it's not always uh, just, I want to go out and get a car. Yeah. And there might be some situations where it's not a bad idea. So right, exactly. we'll kind of cover all that um, yeah. across the board. Yeah, I think that's pretty think much that's, all we have. Yeah, I think that's a wrap. I think we should start cueing the uh, closing music right about now. Right here? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. whatever it is. That so we... <laughs> Matt's going to come up with theme song. So <laughs> until next time. Till next time. everybody listening. Yeah. And we'll talk to you.